Hey everyone, welcome back to Phone a Friend News with the Ambassadors of Gaming. I am one of your two ambassador hosts, Ambassador Chris. I'm Ambassador Michael. And we have a today is like everything Sony. Well, not everything, but a lot of it is Sony. A lot of it is Sony. Um, with just a small teeny bit of Microsoft console, which I can't say because it'll hear me behind me. And okay. some Honestly, uh, some interesting Nintendo news, too. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start out with the 360. Or, I'm sorry, not the 360. Um, so, as you know, the there is a 360 emulator on the Xbox One to try to, uh, you know, bridge that gap for backwards compatibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just got uh, new games for it, two of which being Halo Wars, if you are into that kind of game. And Soul Calibur 2 HD, which is a pretty good game. Yeah. I like Halo Wars. I think Halo Wars got a little too much shit. I think I, game. Well, that's because people were expecting, thinking it was Halo, they were expecting the traditional first-person shooter. Um, I am personally not a fan of these kinds of games, of these kind of, like, be God and kind of move shit around, do get conquer. I, I get that they're good games. You know, a lot of people are really into them. It's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. No offense it. if you like them. It's just not what I am personally into. Um, but uh, let's see here. Yeah, they're, they're coming this week. And they're even talking about um, the studios 343, who currently owns Halo. If you remember, Bungie sold them off before when Destiny was near its completion. Um, They're talking about Halo Wars 2, and it would obviously come to Xbox One, but it would also come to PC on Windows 10. So I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked for it. Um, Yeah, more more so for Soul Calibur. Definitely more so for Soul Calibur. Um, You know what I still haven't done that I've been meaning to do? Hmm. When I first had my 360, mm-hmm. um, I got a, I bought a absolute huge amount. I'm, I'm my same gamer tag that I have now. Um, like four or five years back, I bought a bunch of games off of the store, and one of which was Portal. And you and still then download it on your. Now Xbox. that it's available, I should really go download it, but I haven't gotten to it yet, unfortunately. Let me down. Oh, by the way, one other thing I did see earlier today: uh, Left 4 Dead 2 is backwards compatible. What? Yeah, they just put that up today, I believe. I have seen people playing it. Left 4 Dead 2 is a really popular game. It really is. I know. It's probably one of the most popular. It. Left 4 Dead. Honestly, I feel like Left 4 Dead made helped make Xbox like the 360, like Halo. And Left 4 Dead are like, and it, it's so, legitimately, you know, my friend Adam. The only reason he I know owns him. a 360 is because of Left 4 Dead. He was like, I'm just, I'm just gonna buy it. Um. Well, yeah, there were a lot of things that contributed to the 360's success. Um, one of which was its comparative consoles. The Wii's internet really wasn't all that good. No. Um. The PS3. God forbid the PS3's now was network. awful. PS3's network was uh, not the best either. No, it was terrible. Uh, the PSN was terrible. Um, but yeah, so the online experience was actually, I think for the generation, it was amazing. I think 360's online, once it, once it got through all the bumps, yeah. I thought the 360's online was absolutely amazing. Yeah, you um, but yeah, really it had also problems. had a... Huh? Never really had problems with it. I mean, occasionally you'd have problems with it, but not. It, may, it reminds me of when, you, when your much. Xbox went to poop before mine did. If you don't know, I don't know if we've discussed this before, but when we compare my tech to Mike's tech, no, no matter what we get or when we get it, his always goes to crap first. It does. Every time. His always goes to crap first, and I think it's hilarious. Um, I think I've explained it before, but I, I got a, th- uh, a 360 Slim for Christmas the year it came out. Um, and then Mike bought one a little later, and Mike's Mike bought the nicer one. His had the the uh, the gloss finish with the huge hard drive. Mine was the matte finish, um, but his went to crap so so quick. Yeah, it did. It was so bad. 
it, I just left it out in the open. It didn't overheat. Like, I don't yeah. know what the fuck its problem was. His was better exposed to heat, to better exposed to air than mine was. Mine was in an entertainment center. And his just sat on top of a... On top of a, a dresser? I don't remember. Yeah, no, it was just out on a desk. Like, huh. just sit out in the open. Yep. And let's 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 not forget the Turtle Beaches either. I gave him Turtle Beaches that worked just fine. I sold it to him for, what, 40 bucks? Yeah, and they just didn't 40 or work. 60, I don't remember. And as soon as... The, and he knew they worked, because they did work. And as soon as they got to his hands... They just broke. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That was terrible. But I digress. Um, so, basically, um, they've... I've been really impressed by how quick they've been pushing out these games for backwards compatibility. Yeah, plus the the uh, free games with gold ones are all backwards compatible now. So that's pretty cool. It's been really impressive. They've really delivered, and I think it is. It's definitely, I think, also pushing even more people to yeah. get the Xbox One, knowing that you know, because that was a big yeah. anchor for some people who didn't, you know, they weren't really hardcore gamers, oh. or I guess whatever you can say, you know, they, they played games every once in a while, and they had a 360, and they're like, well, I don't want to blow, what it, what is the console now, 399? Uh, the Xbox One's 350, with no connect, no games, 350. usually. Uh, they don't want to go drop money on a new console, um, I, you know, because they're like, well, there's no backwards compatibility, so I can't play all my games, I'm just going to go out and buy all my old games so i think the more that that upgrades and the more Mm -hmm. titles that they get will definitely uh kind of usher those people in so that way they can keep playing the games that they they've loved to play over the past what like five or five or six years Mm -hmm. and also usher into the new gaming meta too so one question for you before we move on and i won't take too long with this i hope you don't either you ever play borderlands i have not the I've first, seen you play it many a time. The first Borderlands is free right now on Games with Gold if you want to try it. Just putting it out there. It is FPS. It's very. It plays similarly know, I've, to I've the Vision with the tree and all that, but yeah. I just wanted to let you know. Maybe you try it out. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. Um, huh. I have the space for it. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big game. So. Um, so you want to move on to Sony now? Sony. Lots of Sony. Lots and lots and lots of Sony. Yes, lots of Sony today. Uh, we, you, should, you should do the headset last. Yeah. That, that, that's the juiciest. That, that, that has, I feel like that's the one with the most controversy behind it, especially with something in the article, but I'll point that out in a yeah. little bit. So, when was this? Today? Yesterday? Are you talking about the studio? Day. No, 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 I'm talking about the, well, yeah, one of the new studios, Study, Sony made a new studio called Forward Works, and they're specifically made to create smartphone games, and this was, yeah, uh, the other day, uh, March 25th, sorry, now I'm, bef- I'm slightly now bef- confused. Bef- before you guys freak out, um, if you are well endowed on your gaming news, you know that Sony already tried this. They already tried to get into the mobile gaming network, or uh, the the that kind of a, a group. It didn't work out so well. I don't understand what the idea PlayStation has with this whole. We want our games to be compatible across all platforms, so they all have to run the same across all platforms. No, I don't, this is a uh, different thing, though. I know, I know, but I'm. But pointing yeah, it that out. that last one was that. I'm, I'm pointing it out. It, it's it's the same thing that pulled back uh, games on the Vita and the PS4 because no one wanted to make no one wanted to dumb down the games. Like mm-hmm. they're like, we want to make games on the using the PS4's new hardware, and it does have some kick-ass hardware. I I prefer I prefer my 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 Microsoft console, but I will be honest and say that the PS4 has some pretty kick-ass hardware. Yeah, it really does. The the graphics are quite good, actually. Certain games, um, uh, like I have Digimon. The newest one and it scaled down on the vita isn't that bad it's still pretty visually impressive for a handheld but but the point i'm trying to make is that there are some games where features oh it, yeah you can't just aren't features. available and so what mm-hmm. they say is they're like well make design the game for the vita and then we'll bring it up yeah we'll just the ps4 but we'll no just, one wanted to do yeah, that no one wanted no one wanted to do that they wanted to they make all their to make it on the ps4 yeah, like they're like you just you just revealed a new console and just are producing a new console with all this new hardware, and you want us to make games for 
for the handheld. Well, the problem was the Vita had already been out for like two years. Yeah, it's like uh, it just yeah. I mean, and it already like started to die. So. I get I get this whole thing of everyone wants everything to be like Jarvis from Iron Man, where he can go anywhere and do everything and is the same yeah. on everything. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. It'd be awesome if it did, but no. it just doesn't. We're um, not at that point yet. And the same thing with Vita and mobile games. They try to do that too, yeah. <clears throat> and trying to play like. On, what is it on Android? Uh, Android and iPhone. They're sw- doing now with these. No, uh, no, I'm talking about what they used to do. They, they, oh, they tried yeah, it make, used to be on Android. Yeah, they tried to make PS Vita games. Oh, uh, you know, you really ruined the suspense builder. What? By pointing out everything. Damn it. Sorry. Right. Uh, but they attempted to make Vita games that played identically or close to identically, with some scaled down graphics on the. On Android, not necessarily and it, the best. It was idea. awesome, huh? Not the best idea. Um, but what they're doing here, I guess, is instead of doing that now, they're just gonna make mobile games. They're just gonna make mobile games with PlayStation characters and IPs. So, like, and this is gonna sound stupid, but it's the first thing that comes to mind: a Temple Run ripoff with Crash Bandicoot. Sounds the most plausible to me. You know what I mean? Yes? No? So, I'm sorry. I totally just zoned out just now. Yeah. Well, you made me think I was lagging. I I zoned <laughs> No, I zoned out. A song came on. I'm listening to music in the background. A song came on that I haven't heard in ages. And I was just like... I really like the song. <laughs> yeah, it just totally uh, it just totally caught me out of nowhere. But um, what did you say? What did I you said, ask me? The first thing I could think of is <clears throat> like a Temple Run ripoff with Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, definitely. It would seem plausible. Um, but Wait, yeah. Did you explain what this is supposed to be? What? This this new thing? Yeah. Like doing? Yeah, it's just mobile games with PlayStation characters. Yeah. It's not uh, supposed to be cl- cross-platform, and the reason they're doing this is because, uh, it, it this is all presumptuous, by the way. Um, oh no, this is not. This part isn't presumptuous, but some of the other part was. Uh, according to the Sony reps, the new company will be incorporated on the first of April. It's not a joke, and will <laughs> will likely be focusing on Japan and Asia for now because in Japan, like smartphone gaming is huge. Mobile gaming is huge because they don't like. There's not as much uh, private transportation. Not as many people own vehicles. A lot of them use subways and trains and uh, buses and things like that. So they do a lot of mobile gaming on their phones and that kind of stuff. So that seems to be where they're going with this. And the re- uh, let's see. Speculations by industry experts predict that Nintendo may follow suit in the mobile market since it just released its first at Mitomo. Well, we knew that forever ago. They've been working on their mobile games. They're supposed to release one this year or next year. Um, and then, let's see. This came from last week. This, pu- this came out when we published last week, so it came out on the same day, so we didn't cover it. Um, but Sony closed down Evolution Studios, which created Drive Club. Um, do you know anything about Drive Club? I do. You know it did not launch very well? I do. Okay. Yeah. Drive Club was a massive failure. It, the game was good. The servers were terrible. You couldn't play the damn game for like... It was like a four or five days after it came out. Like it was, It was pretty bad. And then once they got it working, no one really cared, which sucks because the game wasn't bad. It was a good racing game. It really game. wasn't. But like the the server issues were just so bad that basically they just kind of screwed themselves. They just were not prepared for how many people wanted to play the game, and it just didn't work. Like I heard nobody talking about Drive Club after the week where it just fucking crashed and burned I mean, right i feel bad for those guys but i mean and part of it's not really their fault and part of it is like the server thing might be their fault it might not be i don't really know because i'm not a game developer who has anything to do with online gaming so but... the, the, the big 
Sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm done. I feel like the one of the sad things about it is it wasn't one of those things that went down in peace. Unfortunately, they kind of struggled. Um, they died slowly. It's one of those yeah. things, you know, they, they laid people off at first, a solid 55. And if you don't know how big development teams usually are, that's a lot. Yeah, like even big, massive developers only have like 200 people. Yeah. Like so, Santa Monica Studios, I was reading earlier, only has 200 people. Yeah. Studios usually aren't that big. So 55 people is a huge amount to lay off. And eventually, you know, there it just the game development wasn't going well and it just came to the fact where it was probably for the last week people it was one of those things where just like we know we're going down. Yeah. Like we've and it's just kind of sad cuz then eventually someone came in just like pack it up. Yeah, like, sorry, you don't have a job going. anymore. So like that, and that's always sad when you see does. stuff go down that way. Yeah, it, it does. It sucks. It makes people sad. It makes me feel sad. I'd be pretty bummed if somebody just came in and was like, "You're fired." I'd be like, well, that sucks. Pretty hard. But I have one thing that may make it not suck so bad. Not for them. For them, it still sucks. Don't get me wrong. I'm sorry. It's just it's just some chip, some Sony news. That's some a little bit better. more chip. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit better. So, I'm gonna find the exact quote here. Here it is. Speaking to Nikai, uh, Sony Computer Entertainment senior vice president. I'm not even gonna try to say this because I'm gonna botch it. Uh, Ioto, Ito, is his last name. Uh, admitted, uh, opened the door immediately just to correct the video of Sony's upcoming $400 VR headset eventually being compatible with PC. Since PlayStation 4 shares a lot of its components with PCs, the possibility is there. At the moment, we are focused on games and we are not ready to make any anou- announcements at this stage, but I'd say that there will be an expansion into various fields. Um, let's see. Let me continue going this further. Business perspective, it makes a degree of sense Sony would want to make PlayStation VR as possible as po- uh, to as many people as possible though it's probably not wise to get your hopes up for PC version uh, of rigs just yet still Sony seems to have been more on the press with breaking down the barriers between all these with PS4 and PC cross play funny thing about this uh, this article is from PCGamesN.com there was another version of this article I read where they talked about uh, taking it with a grain of salt because the person that translated it said they translated it when they were really really drunk so <laughs> that's not necessarily a good sign um one of the really interesting concepts though that someone did think of was that um or what they mentioned in the article says right here if playstation vr were to be compatible with pc games it would definitely be some huge competition to the HTC to HTC and to Oculus. Yeah, it, would, it would be terrible for It them. would take a hit. I doubt PlayStation would do that, but when you really think about it, it's a good idea. If it just just make the headset um just just like a hub. Like different like different different developers make different controllers for your consoles. Um this could just be you know it could do the PC um VR games. Well but, they would just well, they're already working on cross uh, uh, remote play, right? Yeah. So they're going to have a remote play app where they could use that to integrate the compatibility for PlayStation VR. The problem is, and here's where I get into it, I guess, because I'm not really a PC gamer, and neither are you, neither of us are we're console gamers, but PC people are, can be very, very picky about their shit. Especially like the super hardcore people, they want the best of the best all the time. Understandably so, you know, they spend money on like these really, really, really high quality PCs usually. You know, like if you're yeah. a PC gamer, you know, you're not playing on some sort of cheap little Dell laptop. You're, usually you, not, no. You probably built your own PC. Probably. So that's where it gets in because where they all stand in price for once is where they all stand in I guess quality. They all do the same thing basically, but like Vive has higher quality. The only problem with Vive is um you need like to have six or seven feet of space to like actually play it. Like I could not play it in here. I couldn't. I'd have to play it in a living room. Um 
and Oculus, you just is like PlayStation VR, but it's just more expensive. The only thing is, uh, Oculus, I from what I understand, has one inch more on each side of the screen this way, so you can see like PlayStation VR is like here, Oculus is here. It just has a wider range of view, so, and it basically runs the same hardware from what I understand. It's roughly yeah. PlayStation has said Rift is better that it has higher quality components in it, but the reason they picked what they picked was to keep the price as low as they could while making a quality product. Um, so, yeah, if they put that on PC, it, it might not be as problematic as they think it, it's going to be. I still think it might be problematic. You know what I mean? It still might yeah. hurt some business, because there's, you know, there's PC gamers, maybe they're like, look, I don't know if I want to go this deep into it, you know what I mean? And at that point, they could probably buy PlayStation VR for way cheaper. When this do- if this does eventually happen, it'll already have been released most likely. Maybe even a year after it's been released. So you could probably buy one used for maybe like 300 bucks, which would probably still be cheaper than a Rift that probably will cost you 500 bucks. Yeah. So I mean, it cuz there's a lot of value PC gamers out there too that are like, I want the best for how much money I have and that, you know, or maybe they just aren't sold on it. You know what I mean? Maybe they're like, I don't want to really fuck with VR. Maybe I just want to play a couple games in VR. Then yeah. it'll be worth it. So I don't I don't think they're going to have to worry as much as some people may think they are. I think it'll be it's, just a fair spread. Yeah. Um, like you said, take it with a grain of salt. But also, uh, you know, it, it's fun to think about stuff like that To mm-hmm. You know, like if, if for some reason Sony was okay with making you know, their their VR headset just a hub for other VR games, which I think would be really cool. Um, you know what would really but, stick it? Huh. If they made it compatible with Mac. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Vive isn't compatible with Mac either. Don't quote me on it. I don't know for sure, but I don't think any of the headsets right now are compatible for Mac. So if you have a Mac and you play games for some weird reason... um. You're pretty much as well. You can't even play VR. Whereas Sony's like when they create remote play for PC, they're also making it for Mac. So, you know that might be nice. I'm hoping, maybe they're like, hey, Mac people, we hear you. We know you like VR. Why don't you buy this nice <laughs> PlayStation VR right here? It's the only one compatible with Mac. Yeah. I'm just saying, it, you know, at that point again, three hundred dollars for a VR headset that probably is the only one that's going to work with Mac because nobody's putting one out, not even Apple. So, but that's where I'll leave that. You want to take it home? Take it home. Take it home. That's what they say. Take it home. It's a baseball term. When you take it home, you know what I mean. Okay, enough. I get you. All okay. Right. <laughs> so taking it home. Um, an application has been in play in Japan called what is it? Me Mitomo. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing about this application is that it's Nintendo. It is a smartphone application by Nintendo. Um, it's kind of it's a series of mini games, so it's it's not really. A, a huge deal, but it's coming to uh, it's coming to Android and I think iOS on yeah on March thirty first. Mm-hmm. So this is cool, um, more so because not so much what it is, but what it represents. You know, like then you know we're we're still expecting Pokemon Go, which isn't directly a Nintendo thing, but uh, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see. Uh, there, there's not really much here on it. Um, just that it's going to be a series of mini games, and it says you can create and customize an avatar. Now, I don't know if that means you're going to be able to move your current me over into this, but they don't say exactly. From what I understand, I when Mitomo comes out here, is when they launch my Nintendo, the new like reward program they have. Have you seen mm. that? Um, I have not. Well, it's the new like. Instead of whatever the hell it is, the Nintendo IDs, I forget what the hell they're called. I don't even know. Uh, they're switching over to my Nintendo. 
which uh, has this different reward system where you get points for buying games and you get points mm. for doing certain things and then you can use those points to buy games or get discounts on games and things like that. Um, and so that is going along with this and this is to just kind of get people talking again on the Nintendo platform from what I understand because it's a chat too. You can like communicate with your friends that have me's over, you know what I mean? I don't really know anybody outside of people I actually know as a friend on Wii or in my 3DS. Not right. like PlayStation or Xbox a... where you can just add, you know, you add people you don't really know. You add them willy-nilly. Yeah. So, it's interesting. I'm still waiting on Pokemon Go. Interesting fact about Pokemon Go I read earlier. Only the original 150 are going to be in it. Initially. And then they're going to update it probably yeah. over time. You can assume that that will be kind of their equivalent of uh, microtransactions. No, not a microtransaction. I'm sorry. Of like DLC content and keep people playing the game yeah. um, as opposed to just putting everything out there. And then the game kind of passes. It has its fad for like six months and then maybe no even less. Cares, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to steady flow every maybe like every six months, you know put out okay well here's like 50 new pokemon okay here's 50 new pokemon you know what i mean that that yeah. could work i still think it's kind of weird that it's location based but whatever it's whatever um but that's kind of, i mean unfortunately it, it, it's not really a lot of news we're still in a kind of like a lull of news I'm sure we'll get more soon, but uh, this is just kind of just the small bits. Like I said, a lot of Sony stuff. Not really mm-hmm. much. Uh, not really much else going on. But we will keep you informed, and we'll probably even have more in the next phone a friend news. But in the meantime, we're yeah. going to get out of here. Probably play some division with our friend Justin, who doesn't record with us anymore. Ooh. But anyway, we're going to get out of here. I'm Ambassador Chris. I'm Ambassador Michael, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.